Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering a consistently good and pretty underrated sieve overall, the Inca. We're going to go over their bonuses, give them a ranking for each victory type, as well as a final overall score for them. If you find this useful, please consider giving my video a like. It really helps boost me on YouTube's search results. And with all the new people coming to this game with the PS5 port and the leader pass coming out on consoles, it can significantly help me out and it really just takes one click from you and I'm eternally grateful for it. The Inca are a sleeper sieve for me. I think they're pretty consistently good every time I play them. But are they as strong as other sieves or are they just generally good overall? The Inca bonus is Mita. Your citizens can work mountain tiles. They're worth two production and will become worth three production in the industrial era. They also provide food for each adjacent terrace farm, and we'll get to those later. And this is a consistently good bonus. A lot of the time, you want to settle towards mountains as many other sieves. But an often overlooked problem with this is you end up lacking tiles for growth or for your citizens to work after a while. You also lose out on production due to those unworkable mountain tiles and eventually you're going to be placing districts near those mountain tiles and that just takes away about one food, one production on average per tile. The Inca get this back. They can work many more tiles so they have a huge incentive to grow larger cities. The food you get from the mountains helps you grow really large cities and really large cities incentivize like they, they match really well with the the Kilwa or city state bonuses and ecstatic bonuses it really over time these modifiers really help your large cities a lot and this isn't all though any bonus that buffs a tile with yields will affect your mountains and you can work them now if you get earth goddess now your mountain tiles provide free faith for nothing if you put a preserve down near the mountain, suddenly you always have breathtaking tiles that can't be changed by any nearby improvement that your preserve tiles can get your preserve buildings can buff. This is a bonus that seems small at first, but over the course of a game will end up providing you with a huge amount of yields that other sieves aren't available to get. This connects to the ink and unique improvement, the terrace farm. This is available from turn one and is an easy way to get era score and is a good reason to rush a builder instead of a settler with the Inca. They provide plus one food and plus one housing baseline, like most farms, but you get plus one food for each adjacent mountain tile. You get plus one production for each adjacent freshwater tile. A lot of rivers start near mountains, so you're probably going to get a lot of food and production off of them. You also get plus two production for aqueducts, but they can only be built on hills. But they can be built on desert hills, meaning it buffs your desert cities. Petra cities get really good. They can also get built on volcanic soil. And to me, this is the single best tile improvement in the game. You get so much growth, you get so much production from one tile. This allows you to work a mountain tile without giving up much because this farm is worth two to three tiles on its own. One problem I often hear about terrace farms is that you have to give them up for districts, but I don't view it like that. I view it as if you have flat land near mountains, that's where you start to district. If you have hills, that's where you farm. If you don't have any flat land, you still farm it and replace that farm later with a district. If you have a plus five campus spot, take the plus five over the, di the terrace farm. But if you have a plus four and a plus three, but the plus four could be a good, holy or a good terrace farm, take the terrace farm and then take the plus three campus. It's okay. Use the terrace farm to get early yields and boost yourself off. It makes your mountain tiles also provide food. So you can easily get four to five food on the terrace farm tile with two to three production. And then on a nearby mountain, you'll get two food, two production and some faith if you have earth goddess. So that's a lot of good yields for your citizens to work. And again, this is not a flashy bonus, but it's a long-term consistent bonus that's going to put you over the edge. The leader, Pachacuti, gets the ability Chapaknan. Your domestic trade routes get plus one food for each mountain tile in the city. And that can be easily five to six food. So do you see the theme here? 
its food, and its growth. Large cities built around mountains, playing tall more than playing wide. Although this is Civ 6, so tall and wide is better and is still viable as the Inca. Pachacuti allows your capital to grow super fast. Faster growth means more yields and faster districts, which again means more yields. Pachacuti also gets the Chapacnan improvement. The Chapacnan improvement is a tunnel that can be built on a mountain tile and allows you to move a unit from one side of a mountain chain to the other side of a mountain chain as long as it's connected by Chapacnan and it's connected by mountains continuously. And this is fun! If you can zip your builder across, you know, six tiles of a huge mountain range, you get a lot of use out of it. But I don't get too much use out of it in every game. Finally, we have the Warakak, a skirmisher replacement that cannot really attack cities and navies, but is really good versus land units and can attack two times per turn, and it's about as strong as a crossbow. They're good on defense and can be good to clear out units that the AI builds, but they don't feel too powerful because you have to have other units to take cities. To me, the Inca are all about growing your cities large and using that to go for any victory condition you like. I see them as a very good generalist sieve. They can do almost anything. However, you're not going to be playing towards everything when you play the game. You want to choose what victory condition you go for. Do you want a good campus? Do you want a good holy site? Or do you have a lot of good national parks? You can't have it all because you have to keep your terrace farms and your mountains around. So like putting down a million districts is really going to hurt you. You gotta choose. Always go for an early holy site Get the work ethic religion if possible, get the religion that gives you yields per followers for whatever yield you want, and then either get campuses or get preserves or get national parks. Grow your cities large and you'll go very quickly to your victory condition. You don't really have to change how you play when you play with the Inca. They just play a good solid game. Focus on your mountain cities, choose your yield of choice, put down some terrace farms, and grow and roll with whatever happens. I often find that I don't need to be playing with game modes on either as the Inca because they don't really synergize with the game modes that much. They don't really benefit too much from the game modes like other sims like Ethiopia might. The best choice of victory for the Inca, in my opinion, is science. Huge cities due to your huge food yields, good production, high yield campuses, you get everything you want from a science game. However, you don't get any like boost towards your campuses or any science uniques, so 8 out of 10. Culture is next. Mountains lead to national parks. Preserves makes mountains feel great. You'll get tons of culture, but again, there's no specific push in this direction. 7 out of 10. Domination, also pretty good. You get food, science, faith, production. If you get a good religion, you can have gold. And this leads to great domination play. You get advanced armies that you can build. You get the double shot Warak unit to clear out units. But you'll also need something better to take cities. 7 out of 10 here. Religion is great. High value holy sites, the Chapacnan lets your missionaries move in very weird ways, and you get lots of followers for your religion's beliefs. But you get no profit bonus, making your faith game really slow down. You also don't get any real direct faith bonus besides Earth Goddess, so 5 out of 10. Diplomacy is my least likely victory condition. You do get production bonuses, but you don't get any real gold bonuses, and you don't have any good reason to push this way. It's just sort of a non-focus for me. 4 out of 10. Pachacuti is generally just a strong sieve, and they've been consistently strong. They've never been overtly buffed or nerfed because their bonus is basically just to food, and food is the baseline yield of the game. It's powerful because food leads to other yields. Food leads to faith, science, and production. It's just that you can't use or spend your food like you would with other yields. So food kind of is the least flashy, most consistent yield in the game. I often forget about them. I don't think about playing as the Inca very often, but when I do play them, I'm always pretty surprised by them. I don't see them as overpowered in any scenario. But generally, in most games, they're consistently strong. It's hard to lose as the Inca, but you're not going to win in a spectacular Ludwig fashion. 
I give them a B plus. They're almost an A, but you have no real push that makes you stand out among the other 80 some leaders in the game. So please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.